Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our second SSD seminar. This seminar featured our guest, Professor Masako Fujinye, Nikos Wenka, and Ichiba University. For this seminar, we are called uh, Bella as the chair. Good afternoon. Our speaker for today is no stranger to SSD, as she has begun collaborating with Liri under the late Professor Hayami since 1995. In fact, in 1997, she spent about five months in the field for her PhD research to look at the uh, Santa Cruz River Irrigation Systems Association. And a year after that, she completed her PhD uh, in agricultural economics from the Graduate School of International Politics and Economics, Ayoyama, the Korean University. She has worked for JICA and then served as a visiting professor at the Makerere University in Uganda from 2006 to 2010. Currently, she is teaching agricultural economics at the Graduate School of Horticulture and at the same time, the coordinator for international education program of Chiba University. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Professor Masako Fujie. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Fuji from Chiba University. Uh, thank you very much for giving me such a good, uh, uh, good opportunity to give you your uh, presentation of my research. I'm glad, very glad to be here. So uh, today's uh, topic on my talk is the structure of the emerging rice market in Uganda. So, uh, I studied about the, the Ugandan uh, rice production and market since 2009, and uh, the reason why I chose the Uganda is that because I live in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, this is the, the overtime change of the rice yield by region. So, as you see, in Asia, it's in, from 1961, the yield was 2.0 uh, tons, but now uh, it's higher than 4, four tons uh, per hectare. And then in Southeast Asia, also, it was almost the same as in Asia and Africa, but it started growing in 1981, and now it's, it's more than Asia. And then, but in Africa, uh, it was in the same level in 1961, but uh, still it's just growing a little bit after 1991, but uh, it's still in a low level. So, the, the productivity of uh, rice yield is uh, doubled, more than doubled in South, Africa, South, Asia, uh, South America and Asia, but that kind of uh, Big jump of the increase of the rice productivity it has not yet occurred in Africa. So the many researchers are now trying to tackle the, the, the increase the productivity of rice and so, uh, in Africa now. So you know that, you know very well that uh, there are many pro uh, projects going on in in African countries to raise the productivity of rice and. Uh, distribute to the, the seeds and the, the, the diffuse the, the rice production. That's, this, this is the background of my thesis. Uh, my talk. So this is still a background of my talk. This is the, the how, how rapidly the green revolution can be achieved. In Japan, in, in our country, the, it started, the, not the green revolution, but it's uh, the uh, increase, of the rapid increase in the, in the rice productivity. It started in the late 19th century. So it took 100 years to raise the yield of rice from one ton to two tons. 100 years. 
So, and then in Asia, it started in 1960s, and it took, as you see, and it took about 40 years to develop. So, 40 years from Tukang to Potomac. And in South America, it started in 1980. So, around here, 1980. And then it took only 20 years. 20 years from Tukang to Potomac. So, that means the Lanka. They start the country starts the, the productivity increase, then the faster they can increase. The history shows. Then the, in case of Uganda, they are trying to start, or it is it has already started. And we see it started in 2007. It start the project was started in 2007 by CARB. CARB is the, the coalition uh, the project is a uh, some initiative. The Japanese government is also involved. The Coalition for African Rights Development Card aims to double rice production in 10 years from, from 2007 to 2017. That means five more years we have. Then, as uh, so this is the background of, of, of the uh, medical uh, situation, medical uh, production for our initiative to raise the productivity of America. And then, then let me show you the, the place of Uganda. Here. This is the, the on the equator uh, next to Kenya. So, and it's next to Kenya and Tanzania. So it's in the, uh, in the Eastern Asian country. So, and uh, this is medical and this gravel, uh, gravel mark is the traditional variety in Africa. And it's very clear that the America is uh, high productivity. So America was developed in 1990s, and then uh, it was started the diffusion in nine, uh, 2002 in Uganda, and now the, it's the, the area of American production area is, is growing very rapidly. And this is the table. Uh, figure showing the increase of the upland rice area in Uganda. The, because America is upland rice, the, the, this figure shows the, the diffusion in America from 2002 to 2008. So it's very rapid growth. This is all America? Yeah. All, mm -hmm. all yeah. America. So this means that you uh, the America has a big potential. Yeah. In America is a high yield variety, and also it is uh, chosen by the farmers. So that means America has a big uh, potential for the productivity of the uh, rice productivity. So. And now, uh, my interest in the medical productivity and medical uh, study is not on the production side, but uh, uh, I'm always interested in the institutional aspects. So, when uh, I was here 15 years ago and did the, the study in irrigation, uh, in study of irrigation projects, and at that time uh, I studied about the, the what determines the success and failure of the Irrigators Association? It's a kind of the, the institutional analysis of collective action. So at that time, so 15 years ago, I studied the collective action and the communal uh, community system. Then I want to focus on the market now in Uganda. So my uh, 
what, what we want to, to clarify now is, is under, under the government of local rice market, under the development of rice production. So this is said by some uh, officer in the World Bank in Uganda. And he said that the Japanese government is uh, encouraging the, the farmers to, to cultivate rice. But the market will be the, the bottleneck. So that's it. That is the, the common uh, understanding at that time. And what are the characteristics of the global rice market in Uganda? And how middlemen at various levels are organized into an entire network of rice marketing and how efficiently the system works. Those kind of uh, institutional aspects of rice market is, uh, is the focus for uh, my topics of my research. But my, I uh, studied the uh, data collection uh, last year, but uh, it's, not, it's not yet finalized. And uh, it's an ongoing project. So my uh, data analysis has not yet finished. But today, I want to show you the, the some findings or stylized fact uh, in this predictably. So the study area is traditional rice growing area and the new rice growing area. So I wanted to compare the two regions. So the traditional rice growing area is the eastern part of Uganda. And I chose two places in Namutumba district. And as a new rice growing area, I chose the western part of Uganda in two, uh, two villages in Kolma district. So, let me show you. The, this is the map of Uganda. And Poima district is here in the western region. And the Namutumba district is here in the eastern region. So, this eastern region are uh, the, the traditional area of rice growing, the, the wet, uh, wet and rice. So, so, but the upland rice is also. So, uh, start cultivation in this eastern region. So, the new emerging uh, rice market and the old traditional rice market is existing in the world. And I took the sample of 240 farmers. It's not uh, plenty enough, but it's a, just a preliminary data collection. And in Namtumba, uh, near the town, I took uh, 60 household and, and household far from town, 60 samples. And in Koima district, <coughs> uh, near town, there are 60, and uh, 60 samples far from town. So we wanted to, I wanted to compare the, those uh, samples. And also, in addition to the farmers, uh, I interviewed the, the traders in Koima district and the uh, district. And also rice mirrors. <clears throat> now, uh, this figure uh, yeah, shows the, how the, the uh, traders or farmers or middlemen's uh, transactions are uh, over in, in the rice market. So this is the, the part of village. And this is the, the, the local town near the village, or sometimes inside the village. And this is the urban area. So it's, uh, uh, for example, the uh, Kampara, <coughs> the metropolitan area. So the region is what's divided into, into three categories. And the Ugandan rice farmers have two channels to, to sell them their rice. First, they sell rice at, after, after milling the rice. And so they sell rice uh, by themselves at, at the mirror, after mill. And it can be the inside the village, and also it can be the, the, the local town. So, first message is farmers themselves 
meteorites first, and then sunrise. And next one is uh, the farmer sunrise before me, and the middleman, or farm middleman, come to your place, come late to buy the, the party. But sometimes the, the agent or independent collector comes uh, to the farmers instead of the BH middleman or farm middleman. So BH middleman means that the, the middleman who lives in the village. And the town middleman uh, means that the middleman who lives mainly in town. So, and another category is the, the outside urban trader. So the village middleman or uh, town middleman sell rice to outside or urban trader who comes to the, the production area. Then uh, the outside urban traders will go back to the urban area and sell wholesalers or retailers or other urban traders. So uh, the village middle bank has the, the op uh, options to sell the uh, rice boat from farmers to outside traders or to town middlemen. And uh, town middlemen can sell the rice to the retailers in town or uh, outside for urban traders. But well, sometimes uh, town middlemen uh, bring the rice to urban area and sell their rights to a uh, service to wholesalers or retailers. So there are uh, many uh, types or uh, many ways to sell rice. And, and finally, it will be uh, reaching to the consumers. So this, this is the, the uh, basic understanding of the, the structure of rice market. The, this is very different from the Asian countries because uh, in, in the Philippines, Philippines or uh, most Asian countries, the farmers sell rice in Pali, not milk rice. So the why the, the many African countries uh, the rice are served in, in after milk. So I wonder why the African farmers sell rice in, in mid, at the middle of the middle of the That is a wrong question. transaction between farmers and middlemen. The uh, part about the payment mode. So the uh, farmers sell the, their rice to middlemen uh, mostly by cash. So more than 90% uh, cash payment. But in a few cases, uh, the farmers get to uh, the cash advance, it's a kind of a present. So the farmers sell rice uh, three months before their harvest and uh, at the price of the uh, half of the, of the uh, price compared mm -hmm. to the harvest time. So it's, it's understood uh, as a indirect linkage market. So, but that case is very rare, the mostly the uh, cash payment. And then our farmers selling rice in several times and not at once. So uh, they sell rice, then farmers need cash. So as long as they don't need cash, they don't sell rice. So that so I wonder why it, it occurs. And then uh, I found out that it is due to the bad security condition. So if they have uh, cash at at their house, then 
to know who we are. This will be rubbed. <laughs> so, farmers do not sell lies at once. That means it is for African farmers, it is difficult to sell rice together to a cooperative. So, there are many initiatives to, to get the farmers together and they sell at once to get to the, the bargaining power. But it is still difficult because of this reason. So, farmers, the poor farmers cannot wait. Uh, until the other farmers was harvest. And sometimes the, uh, some far farmers tear the property so they cannot sell their rice at once. And, and another status fact is competition among the middlemen is very hard. And every year farmers sell rice to different middlemen. And the entry to the market, the rice market, is very easy. So there are so many measurements in the village. So there are hard competition. So that means it, it's uh, uh, efficiently working. So and in Namjunga district, 85% of farmers sell rice and milk rice. While in Koima district, 90% of farmers sell paddy rice. It's a very big difference. So. Uh, the reason why the farmers in the in Namtuma district sell milk rice and why farmers in paddy rice, I'll uh, show you the micro hypothesis later. Now, uh, next is the findings on the characteristics of the uh, measurement rice in Uganda. The most millers uh, do not deal rice, rice sale. So one out of 30 millers deal rice in a large scale. It means in the Philippines, the most millers deal rice itself, buy and sell rice. But in Uganda, the millers do not deal rice. Just concentrate on milling. And most village measurement are farmers at the same time. So about 80% of village measurements are, are farmers. It's quite understandable. So, and there are no restrictions to enter the rice market. The average initial investment for becoming a measurement is about 200 dollars. It's a, the average. So, so that's why uh, there are so many there in the hard competition. And the next findings are average education level of measurement is statistically higher than that of farmers. So there uh, more than half measurement are the uh, graduate in high school. So the education level is higher than the farmers. And most rice traders are sorry, say, most of rice traders are also dealing with other crops. Uh, the mainly the before studying the rice, the uh, measurement dealt with the maids who are uh, for beans or with crops. And they started trading rice. So after the uh, medical project started. So they are still dealing with other groups at the same time. And all measurement by maize are farming gates before me. That means that uh, measurement are uh, willing to buy the uh, rice after milk. But in the case of on the same same measurement by means uh, before me. What, and so the, why there only rice, in the case of rice, the measurement of willing to buy after me. I calculated the transaction between local children and urban traders. 
the pH neutron on wine uh, rice from farmers, it becomes 88% from farmers, and the, from other pH measurement, 12%. And selling rice to outside traders, uh, 56%. And 44% are uh, selling uh, town traders for animal gas. While the town measurement, our farmers, uh, they are buying rice from farmers, 47%. And 53% of them buy rice from village medium and others. And town measurement selling rice to outside traders, 87%. It's very high. And the wholesalers in Kampara, 11%, and the retailers or others, 2%. This is the, uh, the difference between the grazing demand and the town demand. So there are some higher uh, layers of the, the measurements. The outside traders or uh, urban traders and then town trader, uh, town measurement and then the grazing demand. And then at the lowest traders or agents. And now, and, uh, on the customs of rice trading between local men and the outside traders, it's an institutional arrangement between middlemen and the traders. So these are the uh, studies the fact I found. Outside traders generally come once or twice a week and make order of rice to local middlemen with price, volume, sugar, and deadline. And then they go back to urban area. Mostly uh, yeah, it's uh, three or four days. And then they come back after three or four days. And the outside traders give some fun in advance to measurement to buy the rice. So this is a very risky thing because the, the measurement can run away with the fun any, any time, because they are the uh, outside traders are not around. So to realize this uh, customs, the, these two conditions are needed. The only the middlemen who possess physical assets, such as stores or storage, can get order from outside traders. So this means that they can, they are uh, believe that. They will not run away. And outside traders and local middlemen generally keep long relationship. So this thing should be uh, should be uh, 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 should should be said after the analysis. That is the analysis. But uh, uh, looking at the data. A very primitive uh, data analysis, mm -hmm. we can say that the outside traders and local movement are keeping long relationship. And from that, uh, from those findings, uh, I think we can say that the Complementary relationship between outside traders and local measurement. So outside traders lack local information on the condition of production. So they don't know that which farmers are, are, are almost harvesting or which farmers have good quality of rice. So they lack uh, information on the condition of production. And that's why I use local measurement to save certain cost of farmers. It's a uh, uh, saving the transaction cost. And for local businessmen, uh, they have local information but lacking funds to buy rice. So that's why uh, they always monitor the rice production conditions of farmers so that they can respond the rice order from outside, from outside uh, uh, traders immediately. And they, uh, they also uh, keep some 
some rice in the storage, or always keep some rice in the storage, so they can respond very quickly, so they can survive the competition among the, the measurement. So outside traders and low countries have this kind of complementary relations. Then the last question in mind is uh, why in the Eastern region most farmers sell meal rice, while in the West region most farmers sell curry rice? And uh, this, my hypothesis is this is the problem of lemon market. So rice is like a lemon, the, the quality of the rice cannot be identified after the milk is milk. So, and the experienced traders can identify even its parties, but it's an emerging market, and the, the measurements have uh, less experience to identify the good quality and bad quality. So, that's why the, the measurement uh, tends to, to buy rice and, and, uh, in the the uh, average price, try to buy uh, the good quality and bad quality uh, rice at the average price. But uh, if the farmers have uh, information, it's good quality or bad quality. Farmers know better. So if farmers have a good quality of rice, they, they don't want to sell the rice to the middle man uh, before, sorry, uh, before me. So they want to and show that their, their, their rice is better quality and sell at a high, high price. That's why the farmers uh, with good quality of rice will go to, to the mill, mill part. And then after mill, they will sell the rice at a high price. So the farmers who have a bad quality of rice will sell the rice uh, as a paddy rice. Because they know their body rice is with good quality. So that's why the, the, it's, it's a very typical uh, lemon market. This is my hypothesis. But we have to, to uh, test it by the, by the data I have collected in the future. That's all for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Masake, for sharing with us the results of your study in Uganda on the institutional arrangements for rest market structures. Now we open the floor for a discussion. We would like to answer the first question. Hi. Uh, well, any there are data that show the cost and returns of farmers selling milled rice than selling it as paddy rice, regardless of quality. Because your implication is that in West region, the quality of the paddy is low. That's why they sell it in paddy. That's um, what you explain. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then in Eastern region, mm -hmm. it's good quality, that's why they sell it as milled rice. But I think whether it's good quality or not, there will be some difference in the returns to the farmer if they sell it as milled rice or as paddy, because that's also happening in the Philippines. But, but in the Philippines, uh, majority or almost all sell it as paddy. That's why the middleman get a big chunk of the marketing margin or the earnings. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why I would like to know if... Thank you very much. Yeah. So, I need, needed to explain more about uh, this problem. So, about the, the difference of the region, yeah, yeah. there is another there's explanation. Because uh, in West region, uh, <coughs> in Eastern region, that's true, the Lemon. Market. Uh, some farmers who have a good quality will 
seven paddies in when you <laughs> history and uh, good good quality after so after after me. But in in the case of West region, uh, there is a gap of the, the medium ma the quality of medium machine. So in the so I I have to explain it to, in, in the detail. But the, in the West region, uh, the mirror more, many mirrors have better quality of meaning machine. That's why the the uncertainty on the the quality of rice is lower in Western India because they have a good quality of, of uh, milling machine. So even if it's uh, uh, the quality is not very good, the, the rice is not will not broke broken. So the the difference in the, the quality of milling machine. Is the the reason why the Western region, region farmers sell rice in paddy. But in the East region, the quality of the milling machine is low, so it's easy. The, the uh, rice is easily broken. Then if it's the dry in a bad manner, and then the rice is easily broken. So that's why it reveals the quality very well, with the, the bad quality of the milling machine. That's why the farmers in the eastern region, the uh, farmers with good quality will tend to sell rice after meat. And some, some uh, uh, minor portion of the farmers uh, with bad quality of rice sell in try to sell it in paddy. So the, the price of paddy is uh, very low in, in Eastern Asia. It's a bit complicated, but the <laughs> this is an additional uh, story. So the, it's a lemon market. And also the, the quality of the milling machine is uh, some determinants of their, their, their uh, way of the method, the mode, mode of, uh, of transaction. So they have a higher mean recovery in the Western region? Yes, yeah. Because of the more efficient machine. Any questions? Yeah. Some. Uh, Thank you for the presentation. It's a lot of interesting solution. I have a couple of questions, one related to consumption, one related to production side. But let's talk about the consumption side, which is uh, what you're talking here. Well, the, who eats rice in Uganda? Who eats uh, rice? Is that the urban consumers, rural consumers, or farmers? Who eats rice? Oh, okay. So in Uganda, the rice is the, the commercial, the very uh, high price production uh, pro product. So, high, the, high, not rice. Not, high not, price. High price. So, so, so the rich urban consumers well, eat only rice. Only urban consumers in the, in the richer. Uh, part of the uh, urban consumers, yeah, yeah. or yeah, yeah. mostly that. And where where are those urban uh, locations are? They're in the urban towns. So they're in the east or west? Uh, it's it's in, the, in, the, in the middle. In the middle. Yeah, in the metropolitan. Yeah. So all the rice grown from east and west comes to the middle. Comes in the middle. Yeah. Okay. You know, that has anything to do with uh, these uh, different forms of. Uh, rice marketing, why the western farmers, you, you saw you saw the west, eastern region, they grow only in Erika. Not only in but the many, uh, many kinds of... Uh, there are no other varieties yeah, there, not only in Erika. Mm -hmm. So you said Erika is the one growing yeah. fast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, growing very fast. And how does this rice uh, compete with the imported mm -hmm. rice? Ah, yeah, it's uh, very, yeah, when the government put a very high tax, import tax. So, so no that they are the Ugandan rice are protected from outside. So that's but why they that they take the high price. Okay. But the, the, the imported rice comes in for the it comes in, human, yeah. but at a much higher price. Yeah, so yeah, it's uh, coming in but uh, because of the high tariff, mm -hmm. the Ugandan rice is competitive. Okay. So without the tariff they will not be competitive. Yeah, no. 
So that's the, the, yeah, the problem. In the future, it will be the problem. So yeah. what, what do you think uh, the, the, if you have to do a, some sort of outlook projection for planning purpose, how much rice uh, they need in the future, how much they can grow in the next 10, 20 years, mm -hmm. because the consumption pattern change, the, the, I would imagine eventually the rural consumers, uh, rural people will start eating rice, mm -hmm. because as they get the world here, so whatever. Mm -hmm. So there will be increasing demand for rice. Yeah, yeah, so how much do uh, you think the area can come into rice production in Uganda to have the potential? Yeah, so the potential will be very big, but uh, it's, there are some of uh, uh, to research is going on now. Yeah, so I have not uh, yet the, the data to answer that question. But uh, there, if the productivity of rice grows more, then uh, the price of rice can be uh, lowered, and then the demand will be. Because, because the first slide you showed, that it took 100 years in Japan mm -hmm. to double the. Half the time in Asia, mm -hmm. and it took half of Asian time in the West, in mm -hmm. South America. Mm -hmm. So it should take 10 years in Africa, yeah. 10, yeah. 40, 20, 10. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a scenario. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure it can be realized. Yeah. Yes, but the, 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 it can be a potential. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Are there other questions? If none, then let's so, thank. Uh, is this okay, data available to yeah. us if we want to yeah, of course. Uh, analyze it? Uh -huh. yeah, of course. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's uh, give uh, Professor Masako Fuji a big round of applause.